Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. It's just ridiculously graphic. I want me? to be with you. There's more important things to the relationship than sex. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. It's just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Hang me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. that camera off. Get that camera off. Whoa, whoa. This is, like, not how this is supposed Whatever. to work, Whatever, just go. Dog. Go with him. <laughs> I love you. I'm so sorry. Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Greetings, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for tuning in to this installment of Cheaters. Meet Sandra Sanchez, a young lady with suspicions that her boyfriend may be engaged in an affair with her roommate. In a state of desperation, Sandra implores cheaters to investigate. Sandra Sanchez, age 22. A personal assistant who fears her boyfriend may be singing a lullaby to another woman. When I first met Jacob, we became instantaneous best friends. <laughs> you know, we, shared, we liked all the same things. We went to all the same places. You know, we were excited about just the same ridiculous things together, you know? And he understood my little dumb, you know, habits, and I understood his. and. We were just, we kind of, just kind of meshed really well, you know? It was about six months ago, back in October, around my birthday, that we just became exclusive with one another. And, you know, he's been kind of living with me ever since. You know, he has his own place. He just stays at my place all the time. <laughs> Lately, it's been getting kind of weird because it used to be that if I wanted to go out without him, he would totally freak out <laughs> and be all, no, I want to spend time with you. Now it's kind of like, Sure, and doesn't even give me like a question of where I'm going. I think he's cheating on me with my roommate. Because she, well, they can't really spend that much time in a room with me together. And when they do, it's a real, and it's just this vibe. Like they don't, they don't want to talk or interact because they're afraid they're going to give something away kind of feeling. At this point, it wouldn't even be an ultimatum. You can have her, you can have me. It's going to be a, if you're with her, you've lost me already, yeah. I don't really want to, I don't want to resurrect a relationship that's been damaged so much. I don't think you can really move past that. I think dishonesty is the worst thing you can possibly do. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Jacob Sneed, age 21, an unemployed young man who may be using his workers' comp proceeds for another woman's benefit. Investigation day one. Cheaters investigators follow suspect Sneed over to the apartment that Sandra shares with her roommate, Amanda. Sneed casually saunters inside with a strange air of confidence. The visit seems a bit odd considering Sandra is off at work and investigators wonder whether this visit is friendly in nature. Due to Sandra's suspicions that her roommate Amanda Fritza may be engaging in an affair with Sneed, PIs are prepared for the worst with a hidden camera already in place authorized by Sandra herself. The hidden camera tells all as Sneed assertively moves in, snatching her reading materials away to hop into bed with her for what appears to be a quick catnap. Even with the benefit of an interior camera, it's difficult to tell what's going on, although it's definitely inappropriate. 
A few minutes later, suspect Sneed abruptly cuts his visit short. He puts his shirt back on and gives his damsel a quick peck on the cheek before bidding adieu. Sneed strides back out to his vehicle, and detectives, realizing that more evidence is needed, decide to lay in wait for another day. Investigation Day 3. Following the same pattern, Sneed again returns to the scene of the crime, and once again, the video cameras are ready for action. Sneed and Fritza get right down to business, obviously in quite a hurry to get their clothes off and get their game on. Suspect Sneed tosses aside his socks in a lusty fit and slides under the sheets. Their behavior is self-explanatory, made all the more disgusting by his misleading conversation with Sandra earlier that day. Hello? Hey, you left your cigarettes at the apartment last night. I didn't even realize. Yeah, we said we smoked like half your pack, so um, I'm going to buy you a new pack whenever. All right, yeah, that's cool. Well, I guess I'll go out there because I don't have any money to pick any up, so. Okay, we'll come by after I get off of work. Oh, well, I might run over there sooner because, you know, I need my cigarettes. I'll tell them you're coming. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Looking refreshed and satisfied, Sneed heads back out to take on the rest of his day, no doubt ennobled by his success with Fritza. Cheaters watch dogs have more than enough material and fetch the evidence back to Sandra for her perusal. After the break, the confrontation. With Jacob's treachery confirmed, cheaters contact Sandra to disclose the inflammatory surveillance. Sandra makes a vain attempt at solidarity while analyzing the footage. I'm happy that you allowed us to put a camera in your house because that is where we got the evidence we needed. On this day of investigation, he's walking into your house. He comes into Amanda's room. Oh, man. Yeah. This is what goes on at your house when you're gone. He gets under the blanket with her. They made out for about five minutes. That was it. He got up, put his clothes on, and left. But it doesn't matter. It's wrong. Exactly. That isn't what a boyfriend does especially with a roommate, two people you trusted most of all. And that's what's sickening. Yeah. Well, it gets worse. On this day of investigation, Jacob calls you, says, oh, I left some cigarettes at the house. He didn't leave cigarettes at the house. He left Amanda at the house. There they are making out. He's like, I mean, I know that's hard to see. Yeah. It's just ridiculously graphic. Yeah. Well, I um, don't know. <laughs> do you want to talk to them? Yeah. I just want them to know that I know. Yeah. Not let them think they got away with anything. And that it's wrong. Yeah. Gomez, let me hear it, buddy. All right, so they're not in the house. Where, where are they? Let's load up. All right, well, we're heading that way. What are you doing? Yeah, what's going on, Jacob? You ever watch the TV show Cheaters? Uh, yeah, well, we've been uh, doing surveillance on you for the last two weeks. Um, You're so busted. What? I felt bad about buying your shoes. Why don't you go? My boyfriend, please. Excuse me. You don't need to pay rent for my house. Why do I care? All right? Off the property. Now. Oh, I can't believe this. I can't believe it. He's happier here with me, anyways. It's not like you haven't done this to me before. So you have no problem with it? You're having sex with her boyfriend? No, your roommate? What did I do it to you? I don't even believe this. Jacob, what the hell? 
I'm okay, sorry. you're supposed to be my best friend on top of being my boyfriend. You have to talk Papa, what the hell did you tell me? All the time y'all spent together and look, and you do this to her? Don't he's happy ever. with me anyway. She doesn't make him happy. Don't ever tell me he's So that's ever it? Again. Exactly. Ever. In fact, I don't know what you are her confidant. She talked know. to you. She done Your friends. Why should I care? Wow. Oh, hey, Jacob. What I love you mean when you told her you loved her? It mean I love you. So when you told her that, when she sat with you in the hospital all night, did that mean anything? It meant a lot. Is this the way you treat her? Is this how you treat somebody that, that does that? Somebody. How about a little respect? How about a little I'm sorry? I mean, how about? I see how you have such an issue to hear and how she's going to drag me away. Jacob, if you walk away, this is it. I'm never speaking to you again. How many years have y'all been friends, Jacob? You're just going to throw it away? I don't think it's my choice anymore. Obviously, you're such a... No, no dude, just... No. Coming up, the conclusion. Well, it's sad. It's a, uh, it's a sad fact that she's using him to get back at you. And he's this stupid pawn in this whole thing yeah. that just doesn't have a clue. And he's going to end up getting shafted by her very, very soon. It's ridiculous. Oh, look, there he is. You gonna hey, come Jacob. Or you're gonna stand right over there. How could you? How could you? How could you? I'm sorry. How about I was gonna tell you. Do you love her roommate? No. Jacob. I we're, love we're, you. Wait, 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 wait. Come here. I love you. We're supposed you, to be dude. best friends, okay? We're supposed to be best friends. If you didn't want to be with me anymore, why the hell didn't you just I tell me? I want to be with you. But you get over. There's more important things to the relationship than sex. You know what it's like to watch somebody else have sex on tape? You want me to have sex with somebody else and then show you that tape? What is wrong with you? Sorry. Jacob, I don't know how you deserve that, but she's a hell of a woman. After what I had to show her, Disgust I had to show her oh. of you with her roommate. <laughs> what that took. You have no idea what that took for her to do that. Well, what did that mean? What what did that mean? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and you're stupid. Yeah. And you felt him when he said that. I've known him, I've heard him lie to other girls before here. Yeah. yeah. I know that it was. It wasn't. He spoke though. from his heart this time? Yeah. There's Amanda. Amanda, have you lost Don't your mind? Okay. Don't Where'd talk to you? Don't talk to me. I don't know what I'm going to say to you. Why do you have to do this to me? Huh? What do you mean do this to you? Do this to me. How so? How am I doing this to you? Why would you even do anything like that? That's invading my privacy. I let you live in my house for free and you invade my privacy? You're having you know sex what? with her boyfriend. What the hell are you talking about? Invading You've your done privacy? I didn't know. Why don't you do a show on her doing it to me, huh? She had sex with your boyfriend or a guy you liked. Let's, let's get this straight. You didn't my God. What are you talking about? And you don't have any problem. You even care about Jacob, or are you just yes. using him to get no, back at her? I care about Jacob. Oh, come on. Look, we've been together for quite a while already behind her back. She hasn't known anything about it. And you're just grooving on that. She needs to learn her lesson, too. And y'all want to be together? Yeah. Hey, Jacob. Gerald. Tell me, Jacob. So what she's telling me, Jacob. Make up your mind, Jacob. She's telling me that you want to be with her. What's the truth? 
Are you lying to Sandra? Or are you lying to Amanda? We got a lot of lies going on here. Why don't you set me straight? I just wanted this to be over. I just wanted to be done. You don't want to. You don't want to find out the truth. What this guy wants? Did he turn out of the apartment when she went in? That showed me. That showed you. I'm sorry. I just have a hard time putting up with lies and people that uh, yeah. pull that stuff. Yeah. He tells you out here how he loves you, and, and you're the only one. And then he stays in the apartment with her. Well, I can't buy that. You can roll over on it, but I, I can't. I'm winning. And I'm sorry. I don't mean to be angry, and I don't mean to get in his face, but the fact is, it's a sad sight. Yep. And a sad story. And it's a sad way to end it. With the confrontation behind her, Sandra considers her living arrangements. At the end of the show, Cheaters discovers how Sandra proceeds. But next, Casey Becker returns with a new perspective on the Gabe Teague case, where she was caught red-handed by the Cheaters crew. Casey Becker, age 21. Casey provides a detailed account of the circumstances that led to the betrayal of her boyfriend, Gabe. When the vans, you know, pulled up and everybody was, I didn't understand what was going on and it was really surprising that he would actually, you know, go to that instead of coming and talking to me. He, you know, went behind my back and kind of uh, betrayed me, stabbed me in the back by not just coming and talking to me and, you know, getting other people involved. I didn't think that was necessary. Hi, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Are you Wes? Yes, sir. What the hell's going on? Who is this? This is Wes. Who is he? He's my boyfriend. Then what am I? You, you were a summer fling. I don't know what you were, but. A summer this, fling? This is How are you going to say that after I left to come down here I'm to live with you? I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not, I promise. How I'm are you going to say that after I came down here? It was your choice to move. You're the one that convinced me to. You wanted me to do it. You, you could have said no anytime. When we first met, you could have said no. It made Wes look like a, a bad person, I think. And he really, he's not, he's really a good person and he, he doesn't, he doesn't like to, you know, have conflict and uh, confrontation, but I think the cameras really got him riled up and going. I think it wouldn't have been nearly as bad if there hadn't been so many people there. Yeah. Put it on the ground. Step back, security, step back. I told you to back off, didn't I? Didn't I? Right, down. Right. Down, sir. Put it down. Put it down. Put it on the ground. Hey, sir, can you put that down? Put it down. Put it on the ground. Can you all put that down? Can you put that down? That's a weapon. Please, please get put it down. Hey, sir, that is a weapon. Can you put that down? I think Wes and I probably gained a lot from this experience. Um, as bad as it was, I think that we're stronger now. I think we have a stronger bond, and I think that uh, it'll really help in the long run, and it really made us realize that we were supposed to be with each other. After the confrontation, Sandra Sanchez was extremely somber, but not surprised to find out that her boyfriend, Jacob Sneed, was messing around with her roommate, Amanda. Ms. Sanchez stated that she's the kind of person who easily forgives, but that this kind of betrayal is difficult to overcome. Sandra was hoping Mr. Sneed would agree to go to counseling in an attempt to reconcile and mend the tattered remains of their rocky relationship. Initially, Jacob Sneed was very sorry for disrespecting Sandra in such a heinous fashion, but later surmised the relationship was headed down the tubes since day one. He replied that the worst part of the whole incident was hurting someone so gentle and sweet. He also mentioned that Amanda was just way too stimulating in bed and simply could not say no to such a tempting treat. As for Ms. Fritze, she had little sympathy for Sandra and only stated that what comes around goes around. Even though Ms. Sanchez denies that she ever had sex with one of Amanda's boyfriends, the two decided not to be roommates anymore and called the friendship off for good.
According to Sandra, Mr. Sneed and Ms. Fritza are two disgusting people who have no respect or any sense of decency.